So I think it's time I uh, I clean this up a little bit, and then uh, I get uh, I get it all prepped up and waiting for stain. Um, I only sand them down with an 80 grit. Um, I believe it usually comes out looking the way that I want it to. I don't go any higher than that. It's not like somebody's going to come around and feel it or touch it or anything like that. It's just going to be on. I'm uh, doing the whole thing with uh, a uh, ebony wood stain. It's pretty much what I do everything with. So it's actually my go-to color. I think it looks great. This is the one I did a few days ago. It's basically ebony. I actually was going to leave this the color of plywood and uh, decided against it, so I did a really, really light coat of ebony. The, uh, the top is uh, poplar wood. All I did was uh, put a little tongue and oil finish on it. Actually, made everything pop. I'm going to get this other one uh, wrapped and uh, cleaned and everything, and then we're going to put a little bit of uh, um, ebony stain on it. So when I say prep for uh, stain, I basically, I'm lying and saying I'm getting rubber gloves, paper towels, foam brushes. All that stuff you're going to need off camera. Do a little sand down. Make sure that nothing really pops up. I don't really need to stain this because I just used it a little while ago. Or, sorry, I meant stir it. I don't really need to stir it because I just used it a minute ago. So. I don't know if you can see that, but that's what I'm going for. It's just a little light colored black. And using stain, it's all about preference. You can leave it on for you can leave it on for hours at a time, and you get the darkest uh, shade that you can possibly get. The whole thing will be a very deep black. Or you can put it on like this. Take a rag. And you can wipe it into all those little places that you didn't hit with the brush. Just kind of hit it with a little bit more. And like I said, it's all about preference. It's all about how deep you want the color to be in, in what spot. Wanted it. I'm actually gonna leave the inner parts white if I can. It doesn't always work out that way, especially with stain that likes to run everywhere. A lot of people will try to glue this up, or sorry, stain it before they glue it up. I don't really try to do that because 
stain and glue usually don't mix very well. So it's usually a bonding process. I'm to try to glue something when it's just stained up. It doesn't usually always work the way you want it to. Or it just takes super long. Also, I think the inside also comes down to user preference. So I have tried lighting these things up without uh, hitting the inside with some kind of uh, black spray paint or stain or something like that. And it does not look all that great. Because even under a light, you still see the inside more than you see everything else. So I'm also going to hit the uh, inside with the uh, ebony as well um, for the top. All I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the top with uh, the same finish that I made, you know, same finish. I think it makes it look a little bit, a little bit cooler, and it doesn't make the whole thing look like one color. Um, the dowel that goes on the top, I actually hit it with a... Uh, um, It's called Satin Hunt Club Green. It's basically a Rust-Oleum product. It just, I believe it makes it look like the stem of a pumpkin. So, makes it look pretty good. The inside look on one of these things, it does not matter how long you leave the stain down for, it doesn't matter how black it gets, it usually matters on how long can you really deal with the smell of it, and how long will it take you to actually clean it out of there, and you could just leave it in there. Don't want it on. You don't want it to go through and bleed through where the teeth are. That's why I'm not putting very much on the inside of the plywood.
So the box part is uh, done. I'm going to work onto the top. So with the top piece, I take these little dowels. Just glue them into the top. Make sure it's flush with the top there. Nope, that's a mess up. It's all right if that happens to you. It's all right, because it has to be sanded down anyway. Flush, whoop, flush with the top. I'm getting glue everywhere. Now, basically what you want to do next I'm not going to do it at this point until the stain is actually dry. But, so you want to flip it over. You want to hit the top that you'll actually see with your sandpaper. And then you want to take, I find it to be the easiest, you want to take your sander and you want to run around the dowels. That way, they'll actually fit in the holes. So, you can actually get it on and off. Um, it's not user preference on what it's going to be, what diameter the dowel is going to be at the very end. It all comes down to trial and error. So, basically, what you're going to want to do is you want to take your sander and you want to sand it around until you believe it'll actually fit. You want to go over to it and you want to test try it. You do not want it to be very tight or you'll never get it out. So I'm going to do that now. is when you do this it'll usually only go on and look really nice one way so like right here means I haven't done it enough a certain point you can tell 
from that. Not enough of it around the very base has been taken out. So. So, and here you have it. When the battery's on, you'll remember which side it is because you'll know which side the battery faces. It's kind of hard to tell when the battery's not in there. And then three and a quarter inch hole on the top, three and a quarter inch dowel. Cut this off on my scroll saw right over there. Well, over there. Fits inside. You need it to be able to slide up and down because this is your button that actually turns on the light. And we will go over that as soon as the stain is dry so that I can get this so I can get this uh, oil finished and everything. And uh, everything will be put back together. For you it's going to be a blink of an eye. For me it's going to probably be a couple hours. So see you then. So with this, this is the conclusion of my video. I decided not to um, solder in any lights because I do have two lights. But what I can tell you is um, puck light. You're going to want the little triangle piece and probably a couple of the, um, the battery inserts. See about getting a pair of scissors here. I will show you the easiest way to do this. Well, I don't know if it's the easiest way, but it does work. A lot of force. Just want to take off the Silver cover. And this is the inside of it. So, with the inside of these, it's totally up to you. Me personally, I just remove that. And to make it fit in here, you really don't have to do much. Me, I'll cut along the sides, make it more look triangular, and put a hole in the middle so I can put a little toggle switch inside of it. These are so much easier to solder up than trying to figure out this. Because with this, you gotta you gotta cut the lights off. You gotta desolder this from the actual little motherboard. It's real, really a pain in the butt. This, all you gotta do: drill a hole, put it through, thread it. The little backing threader on there for the hole. I will link uh, where I got these in the description. I'll also link the uh, 9 volt holder or if you want just the little tab part. Uh, totally up to you what you want. Um, I'm going to shut off the light right now and I'm going to show you what this looks like in uh, two different colors, red and blue, because those are the two lights that I have. So with that, grab a light so I can see them. So you got your red, which actually looks really good, and this is probably what I'm going to go with. And then shut the red off. Then you got your blue. Blue actually looks very decent. 
probably make another one um, out of the other uh, boards I already have cut and uh, I'll probably do blue on one of those. I'm gonna grab the light here. I'll also leave a description on what LEDs or a link of the LEDs that I use. These things are dirt cheap. Um, I actually ordered probably about 50 of these for a couple bucks, five bucks at the most, but that was a couple years ago and they came from China, so it took about a month to get here, but it was for a different project. So with that being said, um, basically what you wanna do um, either or doesn't matter whatever you decide to do in your um, switch pattern you basically take the top a little push button you want to center the push button right in the middle you take your whatever you decide to use for a stem I used a three quarter inch dowel and you put the three quarter inch dowel in there. It is a good idea to um, take a piece of sandpaper or a Dremel tool or something and sand out the middle so it actually slides a lot better. So basically when it is centered on the bottom, you hit the button and it goes on. Apparently I need to uh, sand it out a little bit more. And hit the button and it goes off. So I will be back when I am all finished. This is all glued up. I use um, one minute instant epoxy just to uh, just to get this over the top of, or I guess under the bottom of this. So it's super strong. And when you push this against here, like if you were to use hot glue, this might actually pop off. With the epoxy it won't pop off so i'm going to mix this up and uh, put it on and uh, get this project done You're not really going to need much epoxy. Doesn't take very much. Doesn't really take very much to uh, hold it down either. Most train of thought which way it went in. Uh, apparently I took too long and while mixing it up and putting it on. Ah.
Oh, looks like it's all dry there. All right, and there you have it. Um, there was something that I noticed off camera was every time I put this in, it would not go all the way down and turn on. So I took a little screw and put it right into the bottom. side it goes on so here you have it pumpkin box perfect for Halloween hope yours comes out just as well have a great day hope you like my video like subscribe Hopefully I'll have another couple of videos out here pretty soon. Thanks for watching.